Welcome to the Hanover Fair uh, 2023. That means 29 years of information on the fuel cell industry. We've been here since the mid-1990s talking about this technology. Things have changed, and it's always interesting to know what's going on inside the industry. Up next on stage, we'll be talking about fueling the future with methanol fuel cells. We'll get the explanation, I'm sure, in the presentation. Methanol is not a dirty proposition for the hydrogen fuel cell industry. Welcome with me, Mads Fries Jens, uh, who is CCO of Blue World Technologies. Welcome, Mads. Thanks. So, uh, thanks, and it's uh, good to be back here at Hanover. Um, so, I will be talking a little bit about what Blue World does uh, within the methanol fuel cell area. Uh, with methanol as a fuel uh, through fuel cells for various applications. So um, Blue World Technologies is in, located in Denmark, in Aalborg, where we have our factory and manufacturing of uh, almost all elements related to the methanol fuel cell uh, system, the high temperature PEM stack, methanol reforming, and other elements. Fundamentally, uh, methanol fuel cells are a hydrogen fuel cell but the hydrogen is derived from methanol right when you need it. So this means in front of the methanol uh, reformer, you, oh, sorry, after the methanol reformer, you have the fuel cell. It can be used for many different applications where direct electrification is not possible and where a liquid fuel is beneficial. And this is both for stationary applications and things that moves. Basically everything which is not easy to connect to a grid for whatever reason. The benefits of methanol as a sustainable fuel is that it's liquid. It can be made from renewable energy, and it's very easy to make in one place of the planet and transport to another place of the planet and store it for long durations of time in a very cost-effective way. So in many ways, this is a very good hydrogen carrier, and this is how we see it. This will enable an introduction, not as a revolution, but as an evolution, because methanol can also be used in combustion engines, as we see today in the marine industry, where a large part of the future fleet of large ships will actually sail on renewable methanol. So this is the way we can change the way combustion engines are done today and eventually replace some of those with methanol fuel cells. Blue World Technologies was founded in 2018, so not that long ago. Um, since then came Corona and so on, but uh, we have been in the industry for a long time. In 2018, we set on to a mission to industrialize high temperature PEM fuel cells, methanol reforming, and systems that use those technologies inside. We have now built a factory in Aalborg, uh, and uh, we have uh, created a very substantial team with expertise within all of these areas needed to uh, industrialize high temperature PEM fuel cells. The technology behind is um, relatively simple. We have a methanol reformer that converts a mix of methanol and water into a uh, reformed gas containing hydrogen. This hydrogen-rich gas will go directly into the fuel cell stack. Uh, the fuel cell stack will use some of the waste heat to run the uh, reforming process and the evaporization process. So you use some heat recovery from the stack to actually fuel the reforming process. And by doing those integrated system, we can get a very high net electrical efficiency. Beyond that, we also have a high grade of waste heat. So this means that the operational temperature of the stack is 160 degrees. This means that the waste heat from the fuel cell can either be cooled very effectively or it can be used in secondary processes, either for more electrical recovery or for heating other things on an application. The reason we can do all of this in a very effective way is the fuel cell stack has a CO tolerance. So this means we do not purify the reformed gas, which is otherwise known in the industry. So this simplifies everything, and the heat recovery and the deep thermal integration makes for a much more electrical efficient system. We sell the components. So this means we sell 
high temperature PEM stacks and methanol reformers. We sell that for various different applications. There's basically really no limit, only the uh, uh, innovations done by customers. Beyond that, we also manufacture in-house a stationary fuel cell system for low power requirements, 5 to 15 kilowatts of stationary power, replacing uh, stationary diesel generators in various markets, uh, specifically industrial and, and telecommunications. This is a system that has an onboard methanol tank, so it's basically the equivalent of a diesel generator, except it runs on methanol. Separate from this, we uh, are in the process of uh, making a marine system which is substantially larger in size. So this is a megawatt platform. This megawatt platform we are currently developing. We expect to make a sea trial in 2025, and following that, we will commercialize it. This will be both for auxiliary power on the ship, but eventually our ambition is to completely replace the uh, uh, combustion engine on ships in general. The reason we believe that this will be a success is that the conversion efficiency from methanol to uh, electricity will be beyond 60%. And this will completely revolutionize the way to we convert liquid fuels on a ship today. All of this is standing on the shoulders of this industrialization, which we mentioned before. We spent the last many years on actually enabling this, both by developing products, but more importantly, developing the technologies in production that can scale this cost effectively, and also scale it in terms of volume. This December, we went into full start of production with 15 megawatts of capacity per year, and basically now we're in full serial production of the stack. Uh, the machinery is, is oversized, so this means that we can scale relatively easy, and our ambition on the Allborg side is 500 megawatts in total, uh, which is then used uh, to serve this marine market, which I showed you before. And we are present here at Hanover. We have a stand. Um, G29 in this direction, and you can please come and see us for further dialogue if you're interested or if there's something we need to elaborate further. So, um, so please come and visit us if you like. Or this is where we start making a difference. Just some nice imagery. Generator <laughs> at a time. So, thank you. That's my bit. <laughs> thank you. And uh, thank you that it was short, Mads, because there's a lot to discuss. I'm sure there's uh, time now for questions from the audience. Does anyone have a question off the top of their head that they want to jump in with? I, I, I certainly want to do, I remember back in the day, and this is going back like literally 12 years ago, we had all sorts of optimism about direct methanol uh, supplies of energy. People were even thinking about laptops. Uh, but the interesting proposition that you mentioned here, and I think it's really interesting to go into a bit of detail there is uh, the fact that the PEM cell is a lot more tolerant uh, uh, than the typical PEM cell uh, to CO2 and that the optimization of methanol means that not only green methanol but there are countries with methanol infrastructures. There are countries where it's really easy to implement uh, this technology and let's face it, it's a lot more efficient to put methanol into a PEM cell than it is to burn it. So, uh, uh, the two questions. One, is there anything specific about the manufacturing of the PEM cell in this case, running on methanol, with the reformer, but you mentioned the case of impurities. What sort of challenges are there to get a PEM cell to operate, optimize for methanol? And second, what about the infrastructures in certain countries that use methanol large scale? Okay. So, um, so I think a lot of the, um, the, the companies we see here on the, on the fair are very used to low temperature PEM and technologies that manufacture these. For high temperature PEM, we need to change the materials we use mm -hmm. because they need to withstand higher temperatures. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a lot of um, challenges in the manufacturing of those materials, let alone the materials themselves. Mm -hmm. So I think that's sort of the, the key point is we, we have some extra challenges there. But once those are overcome, which we have done, uh, there's a lot of benefits when you do system design with high temperature PEM stacks. Mm -hmm. And of course, the real benefit comes in when you're looking at the refueling infrastructure. 
So as we all know, uh, making a hydrogen infrastructure is, is not an easy task, and it is, uh, you could say, somewhat expensive. But this is flipped when we look into methanol. Of course, it must be renewable methanol. Otherwise, the uh, carbon challenge we are standing in front of will not be solved. So given it's renewable methanol, the infrastructure challenge is, is almost non-existing. Mm -hmm. We have uh, deployed and approved methanol refueling stations by a factory in Denmark. And that mm -hmm. process is, is very, very simple compared to electrical infrastructure and compared to hydrogen infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Do we have any other questions? Well, I'm going to shoot off another one because we still have some time. Uh, I just talked to uh, Dr. Kolb, who's from Fraunhofer, uh, this morning. Uh, we do have this issue of uh, when we have renewable energies and we create hydrogen from those renewable energies, how to transport it. You just mentioned this. Uh, I was surprised how efficient it is to convert the hydrogen molecule to other, let's call them, hydrocarbon fuels, but they're hydrocarbon neutral because you're taking carbon out of the atmosphere, for example, or you're decarbonizing industries. That is, um, if you want to distribute uh, renewable energy, Germany is never going to produce enough uh, to fuel this uh, industrial nation. We have to be able to import large quantities. We have to treat it as an industrial commodity. There's going to be tankers on the oceans, sailing in all different directions with supplies of hydrogen. But of course, hydrogen transporting it simply as what? Compressed hydrogen, liquidified, it's not going to be the answer. Um, to what extent is this model based on a future awareness that uh, in the long term, there's going to be various ways of distributing renewable energy via hydrogen? We can't do it with electricity over continents. No. Um, and. Uh, uh, to what extent is your model really uh, aimed towards that period when uh, methanol as a carrier of hydrogen mm. is going, or is this going to be biogas? Um, I think uh, uh, the, uh, the efficiency you mentioned in the beginning is it's, it's very clear that if you have electricity and you can use that directly, nothing will ever beat that efficiency wise. Yeah, yeah. So if that's an option, do that. Mm. We, we are not interested. There's no reason to try and compete with that because that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, what we're looking at is anywhere where that is not an option, either because of infrastructure or because of the availability, as you say, in, 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 in Germany and, and other places where there simply will not be enough um, electricity available directly where you need it. Mm -hmm. so, um, so I think the point here is that, especially in the marine segment, over the last few years, we've seen a huge development there where the marine industry have started to really deploy methanol fuel ships, and they have started to require renewable methanol as a hydrogen carrier. So this industry, we expect, will jumpstart the whole methanol economy. Mm -hmm. And I would actually say it has jumpstarted the methanol economy. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, the use of methanol can be spread to other places. Mm -hmm. Another aspect you just mentioned here is application-directed uses of your technology. Um, for those of you who try to travel to the fjords, they don't like the diesel-powered uh, ships going in there and polluting the environment. If you visit Italy, uh, should there be those tourist ships landing in the ports, the locals hate them because they stink. Um, so is there a market already? We know that le legislation is changing things. Also, public protest is changing things. Um, have you felt the... Um, uh, influence of those changing factors on your business model, uh, are we still waiting for things to happen or are they changing as we speak? No, I think they're changing. So if you look at the, um, the order books for methanol engines from the existing suppliers, they are very, very large. So, so in the coming years, we're going to see a lot of uh, ships sailing on, on, on methanol, mm -hmm. but with traditional technology. So fundamentally, this change towards renewable methanol is going to happen. Mm -hmm. And we think that methanol fuel cells can enable this even better. So that is actually our core mission, is to enable e-fuels mm -hmm. in any way possible. And that's where we have a, an offering of being more efficient than a combustion. Mm -hmm. 
uh, you mentioned combustion. I, I don't want to curtail, if anyone has a brief question, please ask. I could talk for ages about this topic, but uh, uh, raise your hand if you do have a question. Well, all right, one last question, of course. It's simply, so we all are on the same page. Uh, you have a ton of methanol. Uh, you could burn it in a combustion engine, or you could run it through your uh, uh, methanol uh, PEM cell uh, unit. Uh, what's more efficient? I know the answer, but everyone else should know <laughs> the answer. I think it depends on which combustion engine you have, but, but in general, uh, the methanol fuel cell will do a better job in terms of electrical efficiency um, and in terms of usable waste heat as well. So, so that's the entire value proposition we, we bring to the table. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Stated realistically and humbly, <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, Mats Jensen, from, uh, CEO of Blue World Technologies. I hope to see you back here next year. <laughs>